The question we're exploring is whether there's a significant difference between divorced or married perspectives' response to a bank's marketing campaign. Specifically, is one group more likely to subscribe to a term deposit? Unlike our previous example, this is a simple, binary yes or no measurement. Our null hypothesis is that there is no difference between these groups. Our alternative hypothesis is that there is a difference. That alternative hypothesis tells us that we need to use a two-tail test. To start, let's open a new sheet. We'll copy and move the data here so we don't have to mess with our original data. Let's create a filter. Select only the divorced people. Then copy that into a new tab. And remove everything but our conversion column, which we want to give a new header, so we remember which sample this is. And then repeat these steps, but for the married people. and keep only the data points that we like. Again, change the header so everything is clearly labeled. Let's go to the Data tab and open the Data Analysis. Now, which t-test should we run? Well, we'd use the pair test if we were showing each subject both variables, like having each subject do a blind taste test of Coke and Pepsi. In this case, each observation is a completely different person, so this isn't the right test. We'd assume equal variance unless we have a good reason to assume the variance might be different. And in this case, we do have a good reason. Because we actually have a lot more people in our married group than are in our divorced group. When the number of observations for each group aren't the same, we'll want to use the unequal variance test. And, you'll notice that we get a warning that the input range contains non-numeric data. This is a bit of a data labeling issue. Excel isn't able to run this test on text strings, so we have to convert our text into numerical data. The number we pick is a bit arbitrary, but it makes sense to have a no equal a zero and a yes equal a one. For simplicity, let's just use the find and replace feature to change our no's to zeros and yeses to ones. Sometimes calculated if statements might be a better choice. It would be a bit more fail-proof if an error appeared in our data, but for this data, I know find and replace will work. So press Ctrl and F, then go to the replace tab. Replace no with zero, and then yes with one. Let's try our t-test again. Go to the data tab, data analysis, and then select t-test to sample assuming unequal variance. And our result is 0 0.000175, which is highly significant. Our difference, or the actual effect size, isn't that much in this test, but our certainty is quite large. This is thanks to a solid sample size and less variance in our samples than in our previous test. And real quick, to show you that the numbers we choose are somewhat arbitrary, let's replace all the zeros with 52. Run the test again, and we get the same p-value. But I do like the 0 and 1 method much better, as our mean is actually the same as our conversion rate for the campaign. Now, you could run this test a different way, perhaps grabbing a smaller sample. If you just selected the first 5,000 users in both samples, and then assumed equal variance, that could work.
but be careful. In fact, when we do this, notice that our mean drops dramatically for our divorced group. So does our p-value. What's going on here? Well, we did cut off 207 observations from the end of our divorced group, but it's odd that small change in sample size would change our measure. Let's head back to our original data set. Hmm, notice our samples are arranged by date. We might have unintentionally introduced a bias. By taking the first 5,000, we're cutting off the very last dates of our campaign. And looking at that period, it looks like conversion was quite high. Without even running the calculation, I can see quite a lot of conversions, easily over 10%. It's possible there is a seasonality effect, and September to November are particularly busy months. Springtime is usually a busier time for banks, and this is a Portuguese bank, but it would be springtime in Brazil. Perhaps a lot of their customers are Brazilian. It might also be partial due to time pressure. A marketing offer that's ending soon might drive conversion better. Let's check if our married sample sees the same spike. Yep, it does. If you're grabbing a smaller sample from a larger data set, a good practice is to just do a quick random sort of your data. Type equals rand and in brackets, then double click the corner. Do a sort. Then grab your data. This means we're not unintentionally sorting by another variable and introducing bias. An extra layer of random never hurts. One last note, with a data set like this, with multiple variables, a really good place to have started our analysis would actually be with an exploratory data analysis, or EDA. This would help us quickly identify variables that contain correlations. We won't be digging into how to conduct an EDA in this course, but you can check out our Data Science Fundamentals course for more on this topic.